My name is Michelle Emsley. I'm the president of Capicoa and I work here at the Yukon Arts Centre in Whitehorse, Yukon, traditional territory of the Kwan Lundun First Nation and Ta'an Kwachun Council. This beautiful snow sculpture was carved for us for World Whale Day Festival. The COVID-19 pandemic has completely disrupted the process for the creation and sharing of transformative artistic expression around the globe. In response, Capicoa's International Market Development Committee launched this project, Connections, to provide artists and presenters virtual space for exchanging ideas and to develop new networks. Canadians came together virtually with their counterparts from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Denmark, Mexico, Norway, Scotland, and Taiwan. The artists represent a multidisciplinary breadth of work from across Canada and around the globe. As a culmination to the project, we asked each of the artists to produce a three minute video to share their practice with hopes for future international exchange. On behalf of Capicoa, we acknowledge that Connections is supported in part by a contribution from Global Affairs Canada Can Export Association Program and the Department of Canadian Heritage Creative Export Program. And now, let's meet the artists. Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Hélène Langevin, je suis chorégraphe et directrice artistique de la compagnie de danse Bouge de là. Euh, je suis basée à Montréal, au Québec et au Canada. Moi, j'ai deux pieds qui dansent. J'ai un pied qui danse dans le monde de l'enseignement, dans les écoles, où est-ce que je fais beaucoup de médiation culturelle avec la danse, et aussi parce que j'ai créé ce jeu de cartes-là, 26 cartes à danser, qui aide les professeurs à faire danser les enfants euh, de la maternelle à, tout au primaire, finalement. Et l'autre pied qui danse, lui, il est dans ma compagnie, je crée des œuvres chorégraphiques, euh, où est-ce que je mélange euh, différents arts ensemble, différents médiums. J'aime l'ombre chinoise, euh, j'aime euh, la, la vidéo en direct. Là, en ce moment, je travaille à, à explorer le laser. Euh, j'aime la théâtralité. Euh, j'aime cette rencontre-là de mélange parce que ça, ça attise ma curiosité. J'aime jouer avec les matériaux. Euh, et j'aime aussi travailler avec différents artistes qui collaborent au spectacle. Pendant la pandémie, euh, au début, au mois de mars, ça vient de nous frapper et euh, je me trouve devant rien. Toutes les tournées sont, sont annulées. Alors, j'ai décidé de créer « Danse dans ton salon ». J'ai créé des courts clips vidéo où est-ce que je me déguisais, je m'habillais je avec des perruques. Et j'ai demandé aux enfants et aux familles d'inventer de, des danses avec des, des matériaux qu'ils trouvaient dans la maison, des, euh, des lieux... Euh, puis ensuite, ils il pouvaient me renvoyer les vidéos et moi, je, je propageais la, la bonne nouvelle de danser sur le Facebook de Bouche de là. Ensuite, dernièrement en décembre, euh, vraiment, là, ça fait un an qu'on ne tourne plus, ah, j'ai eu comme un regain. J'ai dit, ben là, ça n'a pas d'allure. À travers mes yeux, mon dernier spectacle qui a gagné un prix. Euh, chorégraphique à Montréal 2018-2019. C'est un spectacle joyeux, coloré, les, tous les enfants l'aiment. Alors j'ai décidé de sortir des personnages, des costumes et comme les enfants ne vont pas au théâtre, moi j'ai décidé d'aller voir les enfants dans leur cours d'école, de danser à l'extérieur. Alors j'ai créé un mini-spectacle de 10 minutes suivi d'un atelier de danse de 20 minutes que je vais présenter euh, au printemps quand il n'y aura plus de neige au, au Québec. Et maintenant, je suis très heureuse parce que ma créativité a repris euh, sa vitalité. Parce qu'en janvier, j'ai réussi à faire euh, une résidence de deux semaines dans la Maison de la culture euh, Montréal-Nord avec toute mon équipe artistique. Alors là, on est devant un nouveau terrain de jeu. On, tout le monde y met du sien. On crée ensemble. Je suis ouverte à toutes les idées. On est heureux de, de se voir, de danser et de créer. Alors... Euh, je suis bien contente. Alors, je te laisse là-dessus. Au Québec, dans le langage, le langage populaire, on dit « bye bye là, bye bye là, bye bye là ». is my name is Samuelson and I work as a dance artist and a cross-border artist. I'm a choreographer, performer and producer and I'm also an activist, both personally and artistically. I use movement, sound, singing, music, tubas and eagle feathers in my work. I work solo and in collaboration with others, dancers, scientists, musicians, 
I create my own art and I perform in projects initiated by others. I was born in my old wooden house on Karlsjea. Karlsjea is a small island in the north of Norway, 70 degrees north to be exact. It's surrounded by beautiful nature, many fish farms and a huge windmill park. Where I come from and have my roots affects me both as an artist and activist. And my uh, work lately has been inspired by the many changes that has been made in the nature in my local society. I use my art to fight for our right to a sustainable earth and future. I think I need to be the positive change that I want in the world. For me, local change is global change. The last 10 COVID months has been both horrible and fantastic. Horrible because I couldn't socialize as much as I wanted, but fantastic because it forced and allowed me to work a lot from my main base, Karlsjea. It has been inspiring, powerful and totally amazing to realize that I can do most of my work from my home. And it has also been really good to me to realize that I was traveling way too much and now my lifestyle matches my political views a lot better. When it comes to the future of international collaboration, I hope and believe that we can collaborate as much as we did and maybe even more with less traveling and more digital platforms. Yes, that's me. Woo! Hello colleagues, my name is Kong Ki. I'm a composer and a ping pong and picnic enthusiast. I make uh, mostly music theater works. So that include um, operas, musicals, whether experimental or, or in conventional form. Um, highly theatrical uh, concert presentations of chamber music or uh, song cycles. I also write music for dance, uh, having, having collaborated with artists uh, and companies uh, both here in Canada and abroad. And I have occasionally scored a soundtrack uh, for uh, short films as well. I was born in uh, Indonesia. I went to high school in Macau. I studied at universities in Portugal and Canada and I now live and make work here in Toronto. I'm primarily trained in the European classical music tradition. Um, so my works uh, do uh, uh, exhibit a lot of the influence of these aesthetics. But when I tell stories, of course, I uh, bring in other references as well, and particularly for my own uh, Chinese heritage. Uh, when making work, I gravitate towards um, subject matters that deal with contemporary lives. Uh, so I make works uh, centering around uh, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, gender uh, identity, uh, the plight of uh, workers uh, under globalizations, and our unceasing quest for eternal life now under uh, the medical advances in organ transplant um, in this uh, age of capitalism. Uh, in my work, I most often do not have uh, answers to the dilemma I pose. Um, but I consider it very important to present the questions to the audience so we can all collectively think about them. Like other artists, uh, this pandemic has been a period of introspections. The question of why we do what we do is a constant one as we are asked to or as we are challenged to think about our roles in society. Um, uh, is it purely a means to uh, survival under capitalism? Uh, if that's so, perhaps there are more efficient ways to, to do it, right? Um, if it is to affect social change, then also there are more effective ways to do it. Then why do we do what we do? In Canada, the conversation surrounding decolonization is also front and center. Uh, what that means on a personal level, as well as in the arts ecology in general, is a, a topic uh, artists are constantly thinking about as well. I look forward to imagining with all of you and to also contribute my own part towards a just, equitable and bright future as we navigate uh, through this pandemic and beyond. I thank you. Hello, my name is Morgan Cole. 
coming to you here from the Danish capital of Copenhagen, where I live and work. I'm the festival director of Copenhagen Stage, which is one of the biggest Danish festivals for performing arts. The festival gathers around 100 performances from all over Denmark, as well as selected international performances, and presented each year in May June here in Copenhagen. We also work internationally to promote Danish performing arts. We do this digitally as well as physically in our International Industry Days, which takes place during the festival. So if you want to know what's happening in Danish performing arts, Copenhagen Stage could be a good place to begin. It's been super interesting and inspiring to meet so many artists and theatre workers from all over Canada, Canada and, and the Nordic region. It's given me a greater knowledge of the performing arts scene in the region as well as insights into new parts of the international scene that I was unaware of prior to my participation in this cohort. Apart from this, it's also been very interesting to be part of this experiment of how to uh, meet, network and, and, and yeah, meet people digitally. This is something quite new to all of us and I must say that I've learned personally a great deal about the pure practical part of navigating and using these platforms. And then there's uh, the question about the future of international work. Well, it is a hard time right now. Corona has forced the entire industry to rethink and reimagine the way we work internationally. Personally, I think that it's right now it's all about finding new ways of working that are both financially and ecologically uh, and environmentally more sustainable. For us here at Copenhagen Stage, this means that we need to shift the way we work uh, and start working much more in hybrid formats, combining physical and digital presence. It also means that we'll work even more collaboratively from now on, forming touring networks and presenting collaborations with festivals and other entities, both locally and globally. I really do believe that such collaboration will be part or will be at the heart of international presenting and touring in the coming years. Thank you. Mi nombre es Mariano Tenconi Blanco, nací en Buenos Aires y vivo acá en Buenos Aires. Trabajo con mi compañía, la compañía de Teatro Futuro, desde el año 2013. La fundamos junto a Ian Gifres, que es un músico, y Carolina Castro que es licenciada en Comunicación. Y nuestra forma de trabajar es desde la ficción. Nos interesa la ficción como forma de analizar la realidad y como forma de analizar y pensar el mundo. Oscar Wilde dijo que la neblina en Londres le inventaron los impresionistas. Y bueno, esa frase un poco marca el rumbo de nuestro trabajo. Por supuesto que la neblina no la inventaron los impresionistas, pero los, los impresionistas la pintaron y luego de que ellos la pintaron, la gente comenzó a verla en la realidad, digamos. Y un poco nos interesa ese procedimiento. El, nuestro amado escritor Jorge Luis Borges, escritor argentino, escribió un cuento que se llama Tlonuk Warur Vistertius, en el cual un grupo de, de personas inventan la enciclopedia de un planeta inventado y después el planeta Tierra comienza a copiar ese planeta. Y un poco eso es lo que nos gusta pensar. Nos gusta la idea de un montón de gente inventando mundos que no existen, que es la ficción, y ver cómo esos mundos modifican el mundo en el que vivimos. Los últimos 10 meses fueron bastante amargos, definitivamente, si bien tuve la suerte de poder seguir dando clases y mantener a, 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 a mis alumnos, los alumnos, los alumnos de mi escuela, a través de Zoom y, y pude seguir escribiendo eh, mi, mi último proyecto. Eh, bueno, me falta la otra parte, que es el contacto con, con los alumnos personal y los ensayos y las funciones. Eh, desde el inicio del mes de enero volvimos con funciones aquí en Buenos Aires con el 30% del aforo, así que Algo de teatro estamos teniendo en el último tiempo, pero bueno, definitivamente el trabajo para los artistas de las artes escénicas no ha sido sencillo en el último tiempo. Respecto de las residencias y las colaboraciones internacionales, definitivamente van a estar bastante mediadas por lo virtual. Yo tuve la suerte de formar parte de la residencia de escritores de Iowa, la más antigua del mundo. Fueron tres meses en, en Iowa y al mismo tiempo estuve en residencias de artistas en Colombia y en China y fue una experiencia muy transformadora, no solo eh, por escuchar artistas de todo el mundo y, 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 por, y por 
vivir un tiempo en una ciudad eh, distinta de la de uno, sino también porque cuando uno regresa a la propia ciudad, la tradición teatral o la tradición artística en la que uno está inmerso se ve modificada por estas nuevas influencias. Entonces, la posibilidad de viajar y de, y de sentirse en ese nuevo contexto y también de recibir artistas que vienen de otro contexto y de otra tradición artística es muy importante y es muy interesante. Entonces, ojalá eso pueda volver pronto. Eh, pero bueno, me parece que está bueno eh, que este momento no nos, no nos detenga y poder seguir colaborando con las herramientas con las que contamos ahora. Bueno, muchas gracias. My name is Natalie. I am a first generation Han Chinese Canadian settler on unceded stolen lands of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. I am very fortunate, grateful, and privileged to be here, to be working, playing, and learning here. I identify as a dance artist and a choreographer, which really means that I'm in the business of embodiment, of experimentation, and of crafting um, new experiences and n new ways to tell all of those experiences, new ways to share the experience of those experiences. Um, with my colleagues Remy and Milton, uh, who are both co-artistic directors with me of a company called Hong Kong Exile that is based here in Vancouver as well. Um, we like to think of creating strange new truths and dreaming and manifesting futurisms, um, dreamscapes, if you will, so that we can uh, practice creating the world we want to see and telling the stories that we feel only we can tell. The last 10 months have been very profound in their impact for me. Um, I, uh, it has been much needed rest and digest for me, rest and digestion. Uh, I have read, I have written, I have exercised, I have taken care of plants, and I have done a lot, a lot, a lot of singing and studying the anatomy, the physiology, and the effects of singing on the body and on the social body, on the nervous system body. I have also been playing a lot of outdoor ping pong with my father and, um, and have made it a point to really spend as much time as possible that I can with family. It has also been an interesting time to consider what is my role in dismantling uh, racism and anti-blackness in my own communities. For the future of international collaboration, I must say that I'm not particularly perturbed about it. I feel like um, the pandemic has asked us to become very resilient and creative with how we connect and how we communicate and how we learn and how we um, create spaces for intimacy. And I am interested and excited for how those skills that we've um, discovered or had to harness, I'm excited for how that will translate into what it means to be in relationship with someone on the other side of the world and what does it mean to build rapport and to create something together. I th I'd like to think that in the future, um, international collaborations and touring will be less about product, but really more about um, sharing. And I look forward to that. Hola. Mi nombre es Jaime Hinojosa. Me dedico a vivir la danza contemporánea desde hace 47 años, a habitarla desde sus profundidades y desde sus alturas. La primera etapa de mi vida sucedió en la Ciudad de México, en Ballet Independiente, que dirigía mi director artístico, Raúl Flores Canel. Esta segunda etapa de mi vida, hace 25 años, la he pasado en la ciudad de Torreón, Coahuila, en el noreste del país. Y vine a esta zona geográfica porque en la Ciudad de México ya estaba todo hecho. 
vine porque esta zona también estaba muy desprotegida en cuanto a la producción, difusión, realización, ejecución de la misma y porque los jóvenes la han aceptado, continúo por lo mismo y porque la demandaban desde entonces también. Eh, hemos levantado una licenciatura en danza contemporánea para levantar, para que titula que egresa a bailarines egresados en danza contemporánea. Algunos de ellos forman desde hace 18, 20 años una compañía que se llama Mezquite Danza Contemporánea, uh, que la define local, regional y nacionalmente su alto contenido artístico eh, lo referente al humanismo y a la expresión eh, sensible de la danza sin dejar a un lado lo técnico. Se ha presentado en todo el noreste del país, en casi todo el país, ha bailado en los teatros, de, en los teatros más importantes de la Ciudad de México y continuamos. Continuarán los jóvenes, estos egresados, porque también me he dedicado a generar eh, maestros, coreógrafos, bailarines, seres humanos curiosos, llenos de incertidumbre, más llenos de incertidumbre que de certezas, porque es la incertidumbre lo que nos puede llevar a construir nuevos mitos, nuevos ritos sobre la danza, donde se caracteriza el humanismo y la necesidad de ser efectivamente, reiterando, un poco más humanos. La incertidumbre y la curiosidad que los lleve también a repetir el esquema de renacimiento. La pandemia nos ha llevado inclusive, eh, de hecho, a reflexionar sobre de qué manera tenemos que abordar esta nueva mitología y estos nuevos ritos. Agradezco mucho la invitación para formar parte de este maravilloso proyecto que pretende unificar todas las corrientes artísticas latinoamericanas, iberoamericanas y europeas. Muchísimas gracias. Hello, I'm Heather Redfern. I'm the executive director at The Culch, and I am in Vancouver, which is on the west coast of Turtle Island, on the unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. I've had a fantastic um, experience working with the cohorts. For me, uh, in a very isolated community, I have um, been able to continue my interest in internationalism and how we, um, how we express that through uh, the performing arts and um, performing artists. So, The cohorts have made me feel like I was in touch with my colleagues uh, from around the world and that even though I can't travel, I've had the opportunity to be introduced to uh, many new artists, including some actually from my own country. So I believe there's a tremendous amount of power in um, these cohorts and the conversations that we are having. And I think this power will translate into a different kind of relationship in the future. I see our partnerships and our collaborations uh, becoming uh, more online. I don't think that Uh, meeting in person is gone forever, but I do see a kind of a, a hybrid of those things. Um, it is certainly our intention to uh, continue to present online once we are allowed to have in-person audiences. So it's um, important to me to um, continue to meet new artists and find collaborations with other presenters around the world in new ways. So uh, thank you so much for uh, listening and please enjoy all of the artists and, and all of the information they have to share with you. My name is Natasha Gilmore. I am a choreographer, a dance artist, a director and a mother of three. The work I make is centred in contemporary dance and is very theatrically led, often 
linear narrative stories, maybe a well-known text such as Little Red Riding Hood or Icarus, but also stories that we devise within the creative process. My other work is more thematically led, a bit more abstract, but still has a sense of sharing something about the human experience and is emotionally driven. My practice is inspired by working with intergenerational castes, working with uh, asylum seekers and refugees, and making work for and by neurodiverse audiences. I love to collaborate, I work with playwrights and composers and set designers. And the work I've made has often become uh, recognised now within the children's theatre sector. And we make a lot of work for family audiences. Um, I aim to never underestimate how intelligent and insightful children are. And this makes working in this area really thrilling. I realised how important access to theatre is for children and because of this I've started to make work specifically for a neurodiverse audience and children with very complex needs who are often non-verbal and wouldn't be able to access um, the theatre normally even for a relaxed performance. Um, I've also made work um, with children with complex needs who are predominantly non-verbal and we made a film together um, and there's something that I love about film because we can work in different contexts with people with different levels of experience, of dance, people of different ages, the very young and the very old, and also within different environments, whether we're in the rural Scotland or an intriguing urban setting. I have started to make a video installation work at the moment within this climate that we're working in um, with my own family, and I sharing through choreographed sequences, more intimate, candid moments, something of the family life and our story. And I think it's inherently political because I'm a single parent family. My children are black African, white European mixed. And there we are dancing within a very rural Scottish context. As well as all the professional touring work that we do, we aim to always remain very connected with the environment, the local community where we live and I work um, with intergenerational company that we have and I work with a primary school, I work with asylum seekers and we share stories, we share creativity, we create work together and there's something about making work in this context and the professional context that are mutually inspiring. I'm Adrian Wong. I am a theatre artist and producer based in Banff, Alberta. I'm artistic director of Spider Web Show Performance and one of the co-curators of the Festival of Live Digital Art. My work as an artist is about connection. I like to bring audiences together as participants, as co-creators, co not just co-curators, uh, where we all are involved in making the thing, whatever that thing is. I like working with children uh, because children are uh, able to change, they're malleable. We can plant some ideas in them. Because ultimately I want the audience to come away feeling optimistic. I want them to feel uh, empowered and like they have agency to, to in their lives and in their worlds, in their communities. I've always involved technology in my work, whether it's the technology of, of a letter writing project or uh, SMS text messaging. I've made projects for websites, for Twitter. Um, these are all things that I've done and will probably continue to do because that is how we are connecting, even before COVID. This is how so many of us kept track of, e track of each other and kept in touch with each other. Um, the past 10 months, have been hard for sure. Uh, the organization has never been busier. We have been hosting events and, and you know, uh, teaching workshops on how to move in-person creation online, how to present theater online. And these are, these are tough questions. Um, on the home front, it's never been busier too because I'm connecting my kids to their schooling, to their friends. Um, so it is a, it's a busy time. And I feel like as an artist, I haven't even really fully <laughs> uh, reflected on it yet. So I think there's still time 
for that, uh, it'll come out. And, uh, and maybe this is one of the ways that it'll come out through this project and uh, this idea of international collaboration, which I think is more important than ever. It's so easy for us to isolate in our areas, in our regions, but we know that collaboration makes us bigger than ourselves, that we, our ideas and our minds can go to places they can't go on their own. And so international collaboration is going to be hard, but I think it's going to be so, so important. Um, yeah, because ultimately we're here making art, uh, and that's part of what it means to make a world that's worth fighting for. Thank you.